unless you're an adventure-seeking nomad, a slightly bonkers British prat unicycling around the world to raise money for a bloody good charity, or perhaps one of the countless celebrities out there that let us all vicariously experience the world without upsetting our bank manager through some TV show or other, the chances are that there are lots of things you miss when you travel. There's your comfortable bed for a start. Sure, it might not be everyone's cup of tea, and I'm guessing that very few of you sleep on a bed your partner built with their fair hands using locally sourced Pacific Northwest lumber. But hey, it is your bed. And no matter how expensive the hotel, Airbnb or guest house, it's never quite like home. The shower probably isn't right either. It either forces you to play a game of chicken with the temperature dial, pins you to the wall as you reach for your bottle of shampoo, or dribbles unapologetically as you try to not freeze in the arctic air coming out of the room's AC unit that you still haven't quite figured how to turn off. And don't even get me started on the food and drink. Seriously, I know that I'm picky about my morning coffee, but I imagine coffee connoisseurs like James Hoffman must travel with a fully prepped Japanese hand grinder and a portable V60 in their hand luggage. But I digress. For those who drive electric cars at home but fly for either work or leisure, the prospect of hiring a car at your destination airport has been pretty depressing for a number of years, because traditionally car rental companies have mostly steered clear of renting out electric cars. Yet, just like finding a hotel room that has a half-decent bed, reasonable shower and not-so-terrible breakfast can make the difference between a happy work trip or holiday and a miserable one, renting an electric car instead of an internal combustion engine can mean a lot. Which is how myself and our cameraman, Michael, ended up renting a Tesla Model 3 from a well-known rental company the last time we were far from home and in need of wheels. The question? Did it hurt? I'll share our experiences in a second, but first, it's time where we all go Oliver and ask you for more. Support, that is. Don't forget to click like, hit the subscribe button, and make sure your notifications are set so that you get bugged the moment a new video goes live. And if you'd like to support us financially too, I'll tell you how to at the end of the video. Two, our rental experiences. I had originally rented our Model 3 online via Hertz's website, booking and paying for the car in advance. Hertz, like most car rental companies, lets you take advantage of a discount if you pay for the car in advance. Although if you do this, you can't pay the entire outstanding amount up front. This is because there are some local taxes and fees that have to be paid at the time of pickup. Because we had a company credit card though, I entered my card's details and waited for my flight. The day before my flight, I was sent an email by Hertz suggesting I use the online check-in feature. This, I was told, would avoid the queues and mean I could go straight to my car. Despite being a Brit, I decided that not queuing would be a really great idea, and I headed straight for that online sign-in. I had to upload a photo of my driving license and re-enter my credit card details, and away we went. Except then... My online reservation wouldn't come up in the Hertz app, nor could I find it in the system. If I followed the link from my original email though, the reservation was still good. When we arrived at LAX the very next day though, things weren't as simple as we'd hoped. Landing at LAX, Michael and I were met with the usual hustle and bustle of the airport, the luggage claim and bus to the massive car rental lots just outside the airport. And when I arrived and showed the Hertz employees my reservation email and said it wasn't showing up in the Hertz app, they directed me to a long line of people waiting to see an assistant. After about 20 minutes, I got to the front of the line and gave the helpful employee my company credit card and reservation number. They tapped away for a bit, swiped my card and commented that it was a good choice we'd opted for a Model 3 long range, especially given gas prices at the time. I was asked if I was familiar with electric cars, to which I said yes, and I was led to our rental car. After checking the car out, we were good to go. 
The car itself, pretty new with a few thousand miles on the clock, was pretty dirty on the outside, but inside was relatively clean. It was certainly not the cleanest rental I've ever had, but it was good enough. And Hertz had left a disposable water bottle inside the car wrapped inside a plastic bag, presumably part of the company's COVID policy. The credit card sized Tesla Model 3 security card was secured inside a special Hertz key ring to prevent us from stealing it. And since we didn't own the car, there was no way to add it to the Tesla app. This meant that all functionality was met by the key fob, including locking and unlocking the door by tapping the card on the driver's side B pillar and by placing the card next to the cup holders to actually get the car to turn on. Other than that, well, it was just like any other Tesla Model 3. It was a new long range dual motor model and it was far quieter and a lot more comfortable than earlier model year Model 3s I've spent time in. Frankly, I was pleasantly surprised at how much improved everything was compared to early Model 3s. Even autopilot felt smoother. It's also worth noting that Hertz included a universal mobile charging connector and a J1772 to Tesla adapter in the trunk, which meant that we could just charge whenever and wherever we wanted. With more range than we really needed for a round trip to San Diego though, we opted to just make use of Tesla's supercharger network when returning to LA later in the evening, choosing the next day to top off using a level two charger in downtown LA before returning the car to Hertz at 95% full. How do we pay for supercharging without being able to add the car to a Tesla account? Actually, it was pretty simple. Hertz bills your credit card on file for any electricity used at superchargers when you return the car. For us, we charged from about 20% full to about 85% full. And I think we paid somewhere around $13.50 for the privilege. So far, so good. The car didn't have any restrictions to its software or functionality, although FSD beta wasn't available, of course. But that led me to discover the first of the problems. The car operated as any Tesla would, and that meant that the settings for both the dash cam and sentry modes were available to use. It's one thing to be able to use sentry mode events after you've parked up for the night in a sketchy outdoor lot, as we did, and it actually gave us some significant peace of mind. But it's something else to find out that the dash cam recordings and sentry mode events from the previous renter were still in the system. So we were curious and we clicked on one and it actually showed the car at the home of someone presumably being visited. The address and everything was pretty clearly visible. Now, it's okay for the rental company to know where you are taking the car, but I'd argue that that kind of information should be wiped clean after every rental. And we told Hertz as representatives as much when we returned our car, as well as making sure that our own dash cam and sentry mode recordings were completely wiped. After just two days with the dual motor long range Model 3, I can happily say that the Tesla Model 3s being produced today are streets ahead of anything produced five years ago. It felt much more like a high end premium car than those early examples. And frankly, it made me want to spend more time in one, even though I'm still admitting that Model 3 isn't a good fit as my personal vehicle. But what we do have issues with is what happened next. After returning home, I checked my company credit card statement and noticed that Hertz had billed us not once, but twice. I'd been billed for the discounted rate ahead of my rental and then again on the day of the rental, essentially turning the 90 something dollar plus fees rate into double that, in fact, more. I tried Hertz's Twitter account to ask for help, at which it first said it would look into it and then basically ignored future requests for an update. Then about a week later, I called Hertz and 30 minutes after that, I spoke to someone who at first said they couldn't find my rental on the system and then said they could see the double charge on my credit card and offered to refund one of them. Except they wanted to refund the wrong charge. Noting that it was the fault of the LAX Hertz employee for not applying my prepay voucher to my rental, Hertz offered to refund the prepay amount, leaving me close to about $45 out of pocket since the prepay rate was significantly cheaper than the on the day rate. When I explained this to the call center operator and asked to speak to a supervisor, 
I was told categorically there wasn't one available because they were all in meetings and someone would call me within 48 hours. That was a week ago and I'm still waiting for a call back. Additionally, while Hertz did eventually get back to me on Twitter, it was to say my prepay was being refunded. Yes, that's right. Still going to refund my prepay. Yet from my credit card account, there's no sign of any money coming back yet. And when I said the same thing to Hertz's Twitter account, nothing. In fact, Hertz appears to have gone into radio silence mode now, and I've not heard anything since Friday evening when Hertz told me I would be getting the prepay refunded. With no refund available yet and no customer support help, it's managed to turn a really positive rental experience into a pretty negative one. Now, I've got no criticism of renting an electric car. In fact, I've done it quite a bit. Enterprise rents out all kinds of EVs now, and when my Chevrolet Bolt EV had an accident with a deer back in November last year, my insurance company's $40 a day rental voucher enabled me to rent a Nissan Leaf E Plus for a whole week without spending any money on cars or gasoline. Enterprise also rents out Polestar 2s and Kia e Neros, and I'll admit, when I was looking at renting in LA, I was tempted to go for the cars available from Enterprise, namely the Polestar 2. But in the interest of trying out Hertz and the Model 3 experience, that's what we ultimately decided to do. My verdict? Hertz should be praised for renting out Teslas. And if you are a Tesla owner far from home who wants an EV while traveling, Hertz might be an obvious choice for you. Especially now, Hertz offers both Model 3 and Model Y rentals. But if you don't care which EV you rent and you have the smarts to use non-Tesla charging networks, you may want to look at one of the other companies who are increasingly offering electric cars to rent, both Teslas and non-Tesla EVs. But just be sure to book early. EV bookings rent out several weeks, sometimes even a month, in advance. That's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew. Go out to the folk on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month supporters. That's Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Quido de Hota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Zachary Courtney, Chris Center, and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month patrons. Patreon supporters. They are Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Grayland, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensey, and Ian. If you would like to join the amazing group of people who make this channel possible, you can find links below to Patreon or you can use the join button on YouTube to become a channel member. Additionally, you can show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or by buying something from our swag store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.